Okay, the first article is article number three, the long-term maintenance. Mm -hmm. Again this year, the project uh, plan is for $300,000, consistent with what we've been doing. It's an on-lapsing project with a two-year horizon. And the continuation of the article is, as it has been for a number of years, an actual listing of the projects being considered. And of the 300, 230,000 is earmarked for the Marston Roof project that we were talking about. I, I won't take a whole lot of time tonight. I was on the roof the other day with the <laughs> roofing consultant talking about what piece we should be budgeting for, what's next on the horizon. Uh, you know, you, you can only have so many conversations in the community at one point, and right now it's most important we talk about Hampton Academy. He really thought that there might be some savings if we could if we could finish this up and find a way to finance it over the next three years, or 10 years for that matter. Uh, but instead of having them mobilize and come and do roofs every summer on that same property. So I certainly we'll, uh, we'll keep you informed and we'll be talking to the board. Right now, uh, the lion's share of these dollars want to go to Marston's roof. Uh, and, uh, and right now we're taking, I forget the number of squares. He talks in squares yeah. on the roof, yeah. but yeah. I don't remember how many squares we were talking about. <clears throat> but, but finishing the, the, uh, the annex and the kitchen mm -hmm. and everything out front, and then the other third grade wing, uh, and then leaves it leaves what probably will be another four hundred thousand, three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand worth of work beyond that. But mm -hmm. we'll tackle that. We have um, we've undertaken an initiative to uh, to replace countertops and uh, sinks in the uh, in the elementary schools, Mar right. Center and Marston, and we want to continue doing that. Uh, one of the things that we talked about at the board level was in reviewing water quality and taking samples and the like we identified some code issues that needed to be addressed. Uh -huh. One of them was those traditional sink tops that we had that co-located the drinking fountain with the Ooh. soap dispenser and the cleaning, uh -huh. which, yeah, which historically made perfect <laughs> sense because it kept all the wet right here. <laughs> but when you consider detergent of some sort with yeah. drinking, yeah. those no longer, the, the plumber said, I can't put that back. <laughs> that has to go. And so that project is going simply because it's time. Uh, there's there's corrosion. There's uh, there's rollback. These are in the these are the original in in most cases. So uh, we we added that to both. We have secured and now used uh, a supplemental grant from the emergency management, the Homeland Security. Uh, we secured twenty four thousand dollars to help us with upgrading our digital camera system at uh, at the schools. We did it at Marston and at Center. And we've waited at Hampton Academy because we didn't want to string up a whole bunch of new equipment and install it only to dismantle right. it and move it. Uh, but, uh, but we anticipate moving forward and making that a part of the project or bundling it into the project. So we have, uh, we have put uh, um, a new digital backbone in so that we can archive and, and record and then review digitally, uh, which is way better than the analog system we put in some number of years ago. We have kept most of the analog cameras and pump them into a converter box that allows them to be recorded digitally and saved. So we didn't lose any of our investment uh, from the past there. And then we have added uh, a couple of dozen uh, digital cameras. All of this really is external property monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, surveillance uh, for security purposes and review around the buildings, the playgrounds and the like, and lobbies where we have traffic coming and going that might need to be recorded. So uh, we've done that at Center and Marston School. That's the first significant of our security improvements that were driven by the security analysis that was done both by an independent group, the Ogons group that we had come in, and by Homeland Security here in New Hampshire. So we've added some additional dollars. Uh, we'd love to talk offline if there are questions about some of the initiatives that we're launching. Uh, we try hard not to talk online about a lot of the security things that we are undertaking. But you see here there was $20,000, $25,000 in last year's article for each of these two buildings and there's 15,000 more. Uh, so we've done the cameras, we're moving forward now with some of the other security improvements that have been recommended. Hardening rooms, creating safe spaces, uh, and, uh, and trying to do our best to protect against that which could potentially come. And again, it's not about making our, our schools fortresses, it's about making sure that we create opportunities and buy time for our outstanding first responders to, to be right. on site. So, um, so that's, the, that's the article. I would move to um, uh, move forward with this article recommended by the Budget Committee. Second. Seconded by Mr. Plough. Um, one question, 
and this probably can't be done, but I, I say this, Ginny knows, I say this every year because this goes back to when Ginny and I used to sit in the library up there with the snow coming in the windows working on the budgets. Representative Mike Edgar and Art Brady were the school board members, God bless them, who in 1986 requested that this article be placed in, with the school to maintain the buildings. Uh, this has been a tremendous help over the year, keeping the buildings as, as best we could uh, maintain. I'd wonder if there's some way we could put their names in this article. I, it may not be possible, but I thought, per, you know, per school board members, Brady and Edgar, uh, in 1986, this is the uh, this is the annual maintenance article. Uh, really, someone who does something that has lasted this long, and the foresight that those two men had in advocating for this, uh, I, I was just reminiscing a little bit, and thinking, sure. but uh, I still, uh, I, I don't know where Mr. Brady is at this point in time, but of course, Representative Edgar is representing the town of Hampton. And uh, I, it just takes me back, and I think how how uh, smart they were and how far-sighted they were thinking of the schools. I'd offer two comments. One, in response, I don't know about adding language to the article, but certainly we could make note in the next annual report mm -hmm. and draw attention to that, and we could do that as often as we like, uh, connected, that would to be the, wonderful. connected to the warrant. Because there's pages. Yeah. There's a, I've got a place in mind where I think that note could go. <laughs> Ginny, what do you think? I think that's great. I mean, we people think that late meetings are 10, 11 o'clock. We went to 1, 32 o'clock in the morning in the old days. <laughs> With coffee and cookies. <laughs> With coffee and cookies and snow. <laughs> so it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. But, <laughs> but bless their hearts. <laughs> are you ready for the, the vote? I've got, I want to. I have a second comment when you're done. Oh. Okay, please. This is where I have to. T I've got to put this in. <sighs> Last year. Actually, this year in February, I went to the academy for the grand tour. Okay, now I want to specifically talk about the Eastman Gymnasium. I can't remember for sure, but um, Dave, when I went through there with you, was it a pipe that broke when during a one, one of the vacations, yes. a water pipe, and then the whole floor had to be replaced? Mm -hmm. January. Yeah. Okay. I, okay, during that really, really cold weather. Now, at the time, there were a lot of um, buckets. And you said that the roof, when it rains certain times, you have to put buckets out? Yeah. Yep. Is it still doing that? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I know that you want to get the roof fixed with the big project. Mm -hmm. But when you have a roof that leaks, you've got to fix it. And this is where the money would go. I'm just making a suggestion. I don't know what it would cost to fix it, at least so it doesn't leak. Um, that would be a priority. If, I, if, if my roof was leaking in my house, I'm going to do more than put a bucket out. I'm going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's already been a year that, you know, the thing didn't pass, so we didn't get any, any fix at all for that roof. But... Um, this is the this is the the, the uh, Warren article where it would go, and I don't know if Keith, if perhaps you have a off the top of your head, uh, you know, a uh, hundred thousand dollars or three hundred or a million dollars. I don't know what, what what kind of money we're talking about to at least repair it so it doesn't leak. I think our goal is to have a new roof over our heads. I realize that. Um, the slate. Roof has exceeded its lifetime yeah. expectancy. Yeah. The toughest thing with the slate roof is we do go out there and we do repair it mm -hmm. and we chase it. Our biggest problem with the slate roof is because of the wear and tear of the rain and the snow, and the uh, slate is very f is growing fragile every year. Mm -hmm. um, we go up to replace one or to find where it's leaking. Okay. We've got copper valleys and um, et cetera, et cetera, that the copper with the acid rain and the mm -hmm. different minerals that are falling from the Midwest onto our roofs here in the East Coast are eating away at a lot of the metals. We 
do not have a cost to replace that roof. We haven't gone there to find out across the place that roof. We do not want any leaks. And we do use this money that you say there, $5,000, and then sometimes we're you using the um, <laughs> operating. operating budget to, to cover the cost. To we need to bring a lift in first, a huge man lift, that's $5,000 a week, generally speaking, if they need to get up on that roof because they don't want to walk on the roof. Yeah. Because when they walk on the roof, they break they're breaking every more tile sleep. on the way up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we need to replace that roof. We need to get the Hanton Academy project mm -hmm. passed. Yep. We do not want any leaks. That's why we do the infrared uh, scanning of all of our roofs. And I'll explain to you that what that is. If we're going to talk about roofs, let's talk about them, okay? Mm -hmm. We do infrared scanning when a roof leaks, water goes into the insula insula insulation. Mm -hmm. Wet insulation does not have any R factor. Mm -hmm. Right. So when the infrared cameras scan the roof, the color is red because heat is escaping. Mm -hmm. see it. When ProScan does, that's the company that we use, Steve at ProScan, when he does that, he, he does that at night, and he marks it with white paint so that our roof repairing team can come in and see where it is leaking, replace the insulation, repair the roof, stop the leak there. Mm -hmm. At our meeting, we talked about the roofs at the academy. I love Public Works, too. They work very hard, but I'm going to draw a, an analogy to some of our roofs on the academy. Ian's Lane. <laughs> okay, we can see where the patches have been done on Ian's Lane. Yeah. Unfortunately, our low-pitched roofs at at the academy are, resemble that. Yeah. Okay. The slate roof. Very few people even want to work on it. The skill set, the talent in our country is not there to work on slate roofs. Mm -hmm. They're busy on the Harvards. You know, the, the deep pocket learning institutions that want to maintain that uh, curb appeal. I know we would love to, but I don't think we're going to. Mm. Um, so it's very difficult to get people in to do it. It's a small job. We do get people in to do it. They do patch it up. Then the next thing you know, it's someplace else. Yeah. And most of the time, the leaks are following the rafters yeah. and then falling into a certain spot. So, we have repainted the roof after we patched it, and I think Dave has been there for a few years now, <laughs> and he's seen the barrels move around the floor. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not always the same place on the floor. Okay, so then you've answered... We have complete... You've answered my concerns is that it's not just... You're, you are trying to fix it. Yes. You're yes. it around. Yes. When they put a slate roof on, what's under it? I know with, with the well, asphalt, they put felt paper or something, yeah, but that's, is it felt paper? Felt paper, yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Keith. And that's a good work into the next uh, article. I'll vote on this. Yes, we're trying to vote on this. I'm going to mix seven times. Okay, Mike. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. Keith? Okay. I'm sorry. Mike? I'm just going to say, when you have a leak in a roof, so looking that leaking down on the rafters, the two by fours or two by sixes, they're all going to get rotten, and then you will fall through the roof. <coughs> You're right. Mm -hmm. So we're making a hazard if we don't repair it immediately. By default, we are repairing it immediately. Yeah. The problem is, is that because that plate is so old, 75 years yeah. old, it's yeah. It, yeah. it. We find a new place, so we are doing that, Post Michael. Repair. It's just yeah. that we. Just can't yeah. keep up with it. We're not the time keeping has up come, with it. The when we said. need a new yeah. roof. Yeah. Okay. Our Thank structural, you. just to follow up on that, because the public is watching this, yeah. we have had structural engineers looking at that through the um, renovation project, proposed yeah. reconstruction of the academy, and they have not pointed out any um, s substantial negligence on maintenance of rafters mm -hmm. or of the decay due to insect or a rot. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, but if let's assume for a second that the warn out them does not pass again, I think sooner or later we're going to have to write we're all gonna, the we're gonna get, When we talk about the proposal, we're going to mention, You're we're right. going to talk about that, Michael. Yeah. 
Keith, right. it's like we're going to be talking about this on the renovation article. Why don't you have, take that seat like a nice gentleman because you can use the microphone. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure we're going to be asking you more questions on the renovation article. So well, I don't want to distract anybody. I'll sit there and I'll come back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, for that. Okay. So right. my, la my last comment, Mr. Madam Chair, if I may. In the very beginning of this packet I gave you tonight right. is the warrant. Right. The language that's there is the correct language, and I apologize, I found a mistake. I had the same mistake last year. We, we wrote the article specific to Marston and Center School, and if you read the article that's printed here, it says to include uh, blah, 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 at Hamptons, Marston, and Center School buildings and grounds. The, the article had previously said, and in the slides, it says Hamptons three schools. Yes. In deference to a comment that was made, we are not planning to spend those dollars on the academy projects because we're promoting a project at right. the academy. Right. We continue to use district operating funds to support the maintenance projects that need to happen there. Right. But I just want to make sure that when you vote, you're voting on the correct language that's in the warrant. My slide needs to be amended. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now, are, are you ready? We've, we've got to get into the renovation okay. article. Yeah. You're ready to vote on the 300,000 maintenance article. In favor? And Ms. Barnes is abstaining. Thank you. I would move.